Hey there, boys and girls. Welcome to this week's episode of Hollow Weekly. Before we begin, let's grab a mirror and say Candyman <laughs> five times. I can, can you still say Candyman five times in a mirror? I'm not doing. No, I'm not. Do, I'm not doing that. I'm not doing it either. You've already said it twice, so like this review is gonna. Be I don't really, have a mirror really though, short. unless I see the ref, my reflection in your eye. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. If That's that, right. The mirror is critical. I, I don't know if that counts. <laughs> I pray it doesn't. Uh, you'll never guess what we're talking about this week, you guys. Never guess. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, it came out. Uh, Nia DaCosta's Candyman. Yeah. Uh, I mean, just right off the rip, like, go, great movie, yeah. like, like you know, it got it got kind of uh, punished by COVID, like a lot of movies did. A lot of movies today from Paramount got announced that they were getting pushed back. Jackass got pushed back. I, did you that, see that? That blows. That made me real sad. I, so the weird thing is, for the first time in a long time, we saw a current movie in the theater. It was a long time. We got our AMC pat. We, yeah. we we did a little spit shine on the AMC <laughs> exactly. pass. And the the tra- I, I always get sad when something I just saw a trailer for in a theater gets pushed. That's the worst, right? I know because that happened during Invisible Man. Every trailer I saw during Invisible Man got pushed. And I and I that's I the hope worst. they keep but James Bond like the new James Bond. Oh my film. god! <laughs> like I pray, like please just keep. I mean, it. I will just put on three hazmat suits and just go. Just tell me where. <laughs> throw <laughs> throw one of those old school like uh, drive-in speakers into the suit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, totally. That would be amazing. <laughs> that'd be kind of that'd be kind of cool. Um, where should we even begin with the review? Like we first impressions. So let's let's give a little background of where we're coming at this okay. from. Okay. So first of all. I've seen the original and both sequels. I've seen the original a couple times. I've, I've there's seen, two sequels. I've, yeah, I've seen each sequel only once. I know there's Farewell. To, what's the second? Farewell the, to the Flesh. I don't remember what the subtitles for them. Okay, are, but, but there's, it, there's it's, multiple. It's like um, it's sort of like sneaky, like the Reanimator series. Okay, where, I only where there's more than you. I think only knew the second one was Farewell to the Flesh because I saw it and I was like, "That's a cool title." It is a very cool title. It's <laughs> an actually. awesome title. But um, so you haven't seen any of that stuff. You're coming to this new. So th- I, that's why I want to get to your impression first, but. The other thing is, there's obviously a ton of stuff in this movie that has things to do with race and gentrification and all that stuff. And I'm not going to deal with a lot of that because you're going to see and read and hear amazing stuff on that from way more qualified people than me. This movie to me is an amazing film, but it's an amazing film. I... The thing that I'm most excited about about this film is that I think it's going to age in a way that's going to take almost everybody, except possibly the filmmakers, by a surprise. This movie is going to age. We so should say. Well, we should say. What did your tweet? Re- who did? Who retweeted your tweet length oh, review? That's right, the OG Tony Todd. That was cool. I was sitting there working on a computer and said Tony Todd retweeting. I was like, <laughs> what? Okay, first of all, because I don't ever tweet. Like you do right. most of the tweeting. Like I go on there and I like stuff. Then I saw Tony Todd and I was like, oh. Yeah, that, no way. Which, thank you, by the way. That's amazing, and and he is incredible, right? So, um, but but anyway, I just wanted to say, like, and there's gonna be spoilers. So that's the background of this review, right? So mm-hmm. I just love the movie. I can dive into why I love the movie, but as someone who has no frame of reference from Candyman, except for that you're a horror fan who knows who of have soaked up the Candyman ethos over the years. Mm-hmm. What did you think of this movie? <laughs> Dude, it was really good. Like, like even like with the opening, like credits were going, and it was like upside down and flipped, like you know skyscrapers in Chicago with all the fog. I was like, oh, wasn't that an amazing visual? Like unforgettable visual. Dude, it, not only was it unforgettable, but like it made me want to do like a headstand in the theater. I was like, how should I, <laughs> should I view this another another way? Like it was just so. It was just it's a cool way to open a movie. Like oh. everything. Like I don't just 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 like it, it felt kind of massive. Right. And they also would. Uh, why were the opening credits like flipped, like the monkey paw and the other thing? Is there a reason behind that? Yeah. Or, so because I, I saw people a, say start the last Jedi did it too, and I don't. What is? I think there's a that? lot of meaning in what was happening here in terms of what's flipped upside down, left right, what's split in half. Like I told you when we were watching, yeah. there were some scenes that were just divided in the middle by a line and it was really subtle, but the screen was literally cut in half. Right. Mm-hmm. So, and then the lettering itself is those abstract shapes, like all that shit. But I'm going to get to that. I just, I, what I want to know is I want to know if, like, as someone, did you feel left out from the candy man? No. Or, or did you, were, were you sitting there regretting mm-hmm. like, Oh, I should have watched so the other one. The only, so the only thing was, I, I know of like, the lady from the first one, mm-hmm. 
I know, and or I Jane Manson, who is amazing. Yeah, I only I only know of stuff like uh, uh, scenes of her, and then like scenes of like Tony Todd, like like with like the bees in his chest, mm-hmm. and him like talking, mm-hmm. you know, real smooth to the lady. Um, that's all I really knew. I'm talking real smooth to the lady. Yeah, he's got that voice. He's got that voice, dude. Like, <laughs> no, <it's>... I know. <laughs> that's like my, my. That would be my favorite one line review of Katie Man on Letterbox. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking real smooth to that lady. Tony Todd's one smooth talking. Um, but the movie did a really good job of like filling in the cracks of like it letting did. So you. You didn't feel left. Out. Yeah, no, I, I what did. What did you think of the puppetry? That was like one of my favorite parts. Let's talk about. It. I love because that's the thing. Because when they released that trailer, I was like, oh, that's a really cool like way to like tell the the Candyman story and all that jazz. And then when they kept using it in the movie, I was first of all, I thought it was artsy, which uh da da. <laughs> There's a lot of high art, <laughs> art uh, in the, in the movie. Um, I thought it was cool. Um, it just it looked amazing, and it caught you up because I think I mean you got most of the story you needed from yeah, and it's a cool it's a cool way to like give exposition without like the characters like having right. a conversation at a coffee shop and being like and can you believe that they she then took the baby and walked right into the fire like they were able to tell it to you like actual storytellers yeah. instead of like doing a cheap way of characters just spilling it out no and the actual visuals are pretty like scary they're they're good they're really well done I think the the the, the one visual of him with the hollowed out rib cage yeah was just such an amazing look and then and then the eyes of the puppets were really creepy which was cool if there hadn't been a babadook i think it would have been mind-blowing it reminded me so much of babadook it did have a a babadook kind of kind of vibe to it um but like other than that like not seeing because i i actually i was telling alex i really want to watch I've been selling it to her as a horror romance. <laughs> so it is. It is? It okay. is. Okay. Okay. I didn't know. I knew that, I knew that there was. And the ending is not going to do you any well, favors. But you're well, not. there was also, I was re- I was looking at what like the, the movie subreddit was saying about it. And one guy was like, he uh, was hoping that they would have used the line, be my victim. Mm-hmm. And which I guess is a line in the, in the first one. And I was like, first of all, that's a cool fucking, mm-hmm. <laughs> like, like that sounds like totally. the name of like an awesome heavy metal, like black metal song. <laughs> like, totally. and I was like, Alex, isn't that a cool line? We should watch the original. It's a horror romance. <laughs> um, but like, I, I didn't need the original to enjoy this one. Good. And I enjoyed this one a lot. And you found it scary because you, you're not trying so not here's to say the thing. Five times. Here's the thing. You're, in the movie theater watching it, yeah. like I didn't really I didn't really jump or feel frightened. Like I don't think I got it wasn't like hereditary scare level. Either. No, it wasn't like that. It was different. Okay. In in, in a very awesome way where sure. the the scenes they were cool. They um I, so like I didn't I didn't jump, but like they weren't not scary. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, like totally. like you can appreciate that like what's going on is actual like horror. Um mm-hmm. uh, but what did scare me is we saw it Thursday night because I goofed on getting our tickets, and I thought it was Friday. And then the AMC pass is like, "You coming?" And I was like, "It's Thursday." And we we're like, "Fuck it, let's go." Right. Totally. Um, so then the next day, Alex wanted to take Jenny to see Suicide Squad, mm-hmm. and they want they wanted to check out the Americana mm-hmm. movie theater because that's now an AMC one. So they went to like a t- and since Suicide Squad's been out for a little while, there's like two showings a day. And they went to the 1030 showing, and I was like, oh, cool. I'll just, like, you know, play some guitar, like, relax, yeah. you know, have some tincture, you know, really, you know, I can just. <laughs> no, that's what, no. <laughs> that's the problem. Right. Is it's, like, 1.30. Uh, their movie had, like, about 10 minutes left. And I was like, I wanted to clean up the kitchen because it was kind of bothering me. I was like, all yeah. right, I got to go in there and just spruce up the place. You know, I, I hate waking up in the morning. The kitchen's a mess when you go to get some coffee. It was the morning. It was 1.30. Well, the, the actual <laughs> yes, I know. human, yeah. well, human morning. <laughs> morning to me is 9.30. <laughs> right. But it was late, which is why the scary part is going to be so And fun. I was home alone. Right. And I'm a big pussy. Right. So uh, I was uh, – and where our sink is in the kitchen, these like you know, three big windows, and it was just pure reflection. And I was looking at it, and then I thought about – like how they scared you in Candyman. I was like, what if, like, like I saw like you know like a tan coat shoulder mm-hmm. like peeking out the corner, and like I it, I swear to God like I felt like this adrenaline run up my back, mm-hmm. and I was like, what has happened? Like, why am I freaking myself out? Right. Like, why am I scaring myself out? I was like, first of all, it put it it put the scares in Candyman in context for me a lot more, right. and I was because when I was washing the dishes, I was like trying to see like what my field of view in this reflection right, like if, right. if there really was the candy man behind me right like i i have 
fir- I have like no vision. Like right. I, I, he's just gonna. I'm dead. Right. I'm fucked. Right. And so then uh, I remember I, I, <laughs> I'll probably never forget feeling this. Like this is why I, really, I love this movie. I'll never forget this feeling. That's why. Why did you? Say I, that? I remember I was I was drying off one of the bowls and I went to put it underneath you know the cabinets and I remember I told myself for some reason I was like, "You're home alone. Would you go into the bathroom?" And say Candyman five times in the mirror. Or right there in the windows while you're standing there at one thirty in the morning, looking out at the trees and the night. And I told, and, and I thought about it. I was right. like, could you, honest to God, right. go there, say Candyman five times? And I was like, I can't fucking do it. Right? Like I can't do it. Like I like, like and I know that like I'm probably right. like I know there's like a, you know ninety nine point nine you never know like an alien right. come down. Uh, I'll be fine, but I couldn't do it. I couldn't bring myself to fucking do it. Right. And the amazing thing is, and a lot of horror fan souls are about to die right now, the, the, this most recent candy man's a better movie. It's not scarier, but it is less flawed. Because the first movie is flawed. And this one is, is got flaws, but not as many. So it's not as scary as the first one. So if you had no chance of saying it after this one, if you had seen the first one, like in the day, right? Yeah. Like just in the theater or without like spoilers... You would have never said it ever in well, your whole I, life. Well, even <laughs> growing up, we right. knew of the movie right. and the whole thing of saying Katie Man five times, sure, and I've course. never done it. Right. I've never done that. I did see one person, though. There was a comment that was like, get two mirrors and candy say Candyman in one of them, say Bloody Mary in the other, <laughs> just squish them together. And the comment below it said, now Kith. <laughs> that was, I thought that, that, was, was, that was pretty funny. I, I, I watched that movie. Um, I forget where I was going to go. So it was terrifying. Yeah. But it scared you enough. And it sat with you a little. It, and and I will I will say like the most recent um, thing that I've been that's been like popping up in my head is that shot of I forget the name of that Candyman the one in the beginning of the movie of oh him, Sherman right. of Sherman yeah. coming out of that wall yeah. smiling like that to me is a sl- is still slowly burning and it's way into yeah. my brain yeah, like see, that's a good way to describe it like when i saw it i was like oh yeah that's, that's creepy but then i think about just how slow he was moving i was like right. why was that slow <laughs> like, right there were scares in this movie that were like you remember in the old cartoons when they had like a line of gunpowder and they lit it and oh it like, <laughs> yes that's how that, yeah that's, <laughs> that's exactly how that's, it feels right, exactly. yeah exactly it's a fizzy like getting bigger a little more annoying like why am i forgiving myself out and then all of a sudden it hits you like that's right exactly it, and i will say this it's weird because the last episode we were talking about philip glass and the chronos quartet doing dracula and when i went to go pick you up i was like oh it'd be fun to put on the original Candyman soundtrack while we drive to the theater because i'm a big nerd i like to like set the vibe and stuff like that you know mm-hmm. and i was like it'd be fun to put on the Candyman soundtrack and i put it on and i had no idea it was philip glass right I'm on this big random Philip Glass kick. Yeah, that was a weird coincidence. Actually. Yeah, it was. It was. It was. It was. It was strange. I. I so Nita Costner nailed this. It is. It is an. I think it's. I think it's an incredible movie. But the the crazy thing to me is that I feel like it's going to amplify out over time in different horror channels. Right. Like a lot of people forget. That Candyman was, you know, there, there were like when Fangoria would do polls back in the day or whatever, Candyman would be like the 13th most popular slasher. It was considered like a slasher mostly, right? Mm-hmm. And and there are channels of horror that this is going to go down. There are other, there are things this movie did with individuality versus collective action that I think are going to amplify out on top of all the amazing stuff it's doing for black horror and gentrification, all those messages. Right. So mm-hmm. I think all of that's incredible. The, the thing that was blowing my mind about it though, was, you know, th- th- the performances are great. The, the real, so this is going to be spoilerific, but the real like thing for me, it really clicked in and became like almost masterpiece level at the end where the thing happened. I didn't expect spoilers if you haven't seen it um when they go to the laundromat so first of all i told you like the reflective surfaces of the laundromat and the fact that a laundromat is the pl- the one place that you just absolutely can't go and feel successful <laughs> ever mm-hmm. right so like because that really plays to the theme of the movie and the fact that i never caught until the very end that a laundromat is like a thousand dirty mirrors <laughs> right <laughs> like oh it was a hall of horrifying warped mirrors all of a sudden and and that just snuck up on you like it was so masterful and you did that right like you i didn't notice what the what the background of that was and you're always looking in the background in a candy man movie like what's mm-hmm. he looming out of it? for some reason i never did it during any of the laundromat scenes until the very end and then i was like oh my god i missed this the whole time but but the incredible thing to me is 
you have this Candyman looked when he was transforming into Candyman, he looked so beaten and so destroyed right before he became Candyman. Remember when the Lord Rat guy is like creating this monster, right? And it made me realize that, you know, to horror fans, Frankenstein can be beautiful. Like Frankenstein's monster, when you see it in the right poster or the right prints or, you know, the right screen grab, it could be beautiful because it's an icon to us, right? But to the guy who made Frankenstein, Frankenstein is the name brand great value meme. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Right? Like he, he's just an assemblage of parts that didn't work out on a table. He's a rough draft, <laughs> right? So he's a massive disappointment to the to the creator. And there was so much like interesting anxiety about the creator and the, the monster and but by by the time Candyman was getting created in the in the body of Anthony, he looked when it was inserting the hook and like he just looked so. And I realized that the process of becoming a monster is horrifying. And some horror movies like Ghost Story like are really good at showing you how what the price that gets paid when you become Frankenstein is the the one, but. You know, when you look back at the old Wolfman movies, like the anguish that's on Lon Chaney's face, that's the real heart of the movie. It's not, we love the silver cane, handle cane, and mm -hmm. the, you know, the poem and the fog or whatever, but the heart of that movie is, this is this sucks that it's happening to you. <laughs> yeah. It sucks for the people around you, it sucks to you, like whatever. And Candyman was getting created and he looked so devastated and destroyed. And then all of a sudden, because it had to be, because it, they needed it, not... <laughs> <laughs> he rises and he's just this force all of a sudden, right? And it's the swarm. And that whole kind of sequence and how that played out and how incredibly they they thought through what that meant was just mind-boggling to me because he is a hot mess <laughs> as he becomes Candyman. But then once he's the swarm, I mean, it's an incredible visual. And then the big reveal is also an incredible thing, right? But just real quick, the, the, the fact that they had that swarm, counter swarm kind of thing, the, you know, the, it was blowing my mind that they were showing ants de devouring a bee at the beginning because police are the villains of this yeah. kind of whole structure, one of the villains, right? And it's, when you see the ants and the bee, I realized, holy shit, like what is my, what is my conception of like bees, right? I think of bees as, they're scary, but only defensively. If you invade their hive or screw with them, you know, right. they attack, but they're not really to be feared unless you provoke it. Like, they have to be provoked, right? And the bees make honey, which is the foundational food of life. I mean, it's the, our main protein source for humanity for, like, thousands of years, right? So, like, you have this incredible... That's what bees are. Ants, they basically... Like, the relationship of ants to candy... Like, what's going to happen if you drop depends, candy? Depends on who you ask. Okay. If you ask an anteater, <laughs> they're like, they're like, <laughs> true, yeah, true, yeah, boy. Yeah, ants are delicious, right? <laughs> but, like, the ant swarm is more militaristic. It's more coming after you to take things. Like, my experience of ants is, they when well, I'm at a picnic and they just take <laughs> the things that I want, right? So, yeah. so the fact that they're the aggressors and the bees are the, the defenders, right? And you have this, the, the here comes the swarm thing happens in this movie. And that's when, I don't know if like that first Sherman scene. Dude, talk about swarm. You, right. But if you think about, if you took the camera above and it, she did, that's what I'm saying. She's a fucking genius. You take the camera above and you look at a swarm of police going through channels. What does it look like? A bunch of damn ants. Right. So like, and what is Candyman? Candyman, what's he afraid of? What's Candy afraid of? Being eaten. <laughs> <laughs> what do ants do to candy, right? So, like, what I'm telling you is there's this ant-bee dynamic that was... And, and that's what I was saying is there's a art creator, like, or the painting is good or bad, mm -hmm. right? There's the, are you an individual or, or are you in a collective, right? All of the artists in this movie are trying to be super individual. That's the point, is you don't become an artist to, like, whatever you become an artist because you have this vision and you do crazy shit and you're like, whatever, right? So... They were all like, well, I have this crazy vision, but they all ended up in the same kind of art galleries with the same kind of representatives Damn. on the same kind of streets, right? <laughs> right? So there, there's this split between nothing is what it seems to be in this movie. 
and Candyman isn't what he seems to himself in this movie, and it just played through the whole film. But at the end, when they really pulled it off, and they had like the Frankenstein Candyman monster, and then all of a sudden he rises with this force of, but it has to be, because he's needed, because it's necessary, right? And I'm like, this is what only really great horror movies do, <laughs> right? This is this is why when when Father uh, Marin or I forget which name right now because I'm so excited about the movie when <laughs> when, the, when he throws himself out the window in The Exorcist and tumbles down the stairs, he that wasn't his the plan for the day, <laughs> right? He did it because there was only one solve left. You have gotten down to the very bottom of a situation and there's only one solve left and it's going to suck all the way around but every other option is worse and great horror does that and this movie fucking does that so it's a great horror movie to me anyway i i was so excited about the movie but i think it's going to grow and grow over time does that make sense that makes perfect sense that made me enjoy the, that elevated my feelings <laughs> of the movie dude like i was just i feel like i was at a ted talk i was like keep going <laughs> but, this you, is but great. remember like if you have that level of thought through and craft then you have it in the music you have it in the cinematography you have it in the writing, right? Like I feel like you have it in the performances, and most importantly, well, even you have the it in score. The I was watching, um, maybe it was Waxwork. Okay. Um, I, it was either them or some other horror people. I think it was them, because I don't follow a lot of like record, right? Things, I, and and they do like horror, horror soundtracks, I believe. Um, the composer for the movie went to the location completely. where they shot, yeah. um, and he got ambient sounds and he incorporated that uh, into it like the amount of care that went into the see, that went into the movie is like right. unreal like that's it made me want to buy the record which i i, I don't want to be one of those people getting the vinyl because like i got spotify and it's like just like <laughs> it was like good like you know what i'm saying totally. but they did have the uh there's two soundtracks i wanted to buy they had jackie brown and then yeah. um god there was one other one that i was like shit and then I was looking at the Criterion Collection. I saw the Ace in the whole cover. Not to go too off off, oh, off, yeah, off yeah. topic there, but the but even even the fact that like the composer went there and like yep. brought the environment into your ears, yep. I think is, was was fascinating. Totally. Um. So obviously we love it. Yes. Was there anything you bumped on? Because I saw yeah, one. A bunch of stuff. <laughs> I saw one uh, scene in particular that a lot of people were. Well, what was it? But the bathroom scene. They felt like they were saying it came out of nowhere. I don't agree with that because I thought the girl in the bathroom was the girl at the art exhibit where she saw like overheard. Yeah, yeah. The same came so like it wasn't like too far of a stretch for me. I didn't I didn't necessarily bump on it. I actually I actually like the bathroom scene. I kind scene. of agree with that. I like the scene in and of itself. It didn't feel as woven into the fabric of the movie as a lot of it the felt, other stuff. It felt it did feel the most like distant but i didn't think it was like a stretch where i was like why are we no talking? no like it, but the thing is in terms of <laughs> i mean it, we we can do it in terms of like it would be super annoying if there was a man-eating tiger in this room right now but and it would also be annoying if there was a fly so there's like that that's almost like a fly yeah <laughs> right like i it mildly it felt it felt weirdly placed somehow on subconsciously while i was watching a movie but i didn't care because the scene was really good um there is there is a thing that's happening with these kind of movies, right? So if you it's gonna be weird if you if you took Halloween two thousand eighteen and you synced it with this movie, like they do with Pink Floyd, Dark Side of the Moon, and Wizard of Oz, right? Mm-hmm. Depending on the timing, you might end up with scenes where there's two cops sitting in a car talking to each other with the exactly the same amount of dialogue for the exact amount of time, shot the exact same way. And then responding in the exact same way to the crisis, right? And then you're going to find another scene where there's, you know, people in a bathroom and then the killer comes in the bathroom. Like, it's weird how often these things are happening now. And I feel like that's producers, (laughs) right? I don't know how much autonomy or how much compromise has comes when you make a movie at this level with this level of backing and that budget and people were wondering if there was um like some scenes that got cut they felt like the fact that it hit right on the hour 30 mark felt like a right. studio thing right right which and, i and, don't know I just, yeah who i that's the thing is who knows and 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 i didn't none of it rose to the level of feeling like whatever a matter of fact i appreciated the movie was kind of shortened to the point because that's my memory of candy man my memory of candy candy man is that like when you think about 
the ending of the original Candyman, which you haven't seen, but when you see it in full, it's it's like I was always telling you about that story, Dracula's guest, the the lost little short start of the novel Dracula, which isn't in the book Dracula, but like is a magnificent little short story, just on its own, right? Just a perfect 12 pages. You don't need it. It doesn't need to be part of the book. It doesn't need to be longer. It's just like, you know. Yeah. And I feel like that's what kind of what happens here is even when the scenes are bad, like badly placed, I guess, like the bathroom scene, it kind of works just on its own. And then I don't know. I My problem, my main problem is if you if you let producers force you into similar kind of looking things they they look the same the Mm -hmm. bathroom kill in 2018 halloween and the bathroom kill in this one are paced almost exactly the same right like it doesn't have to be that way think about the amazing bathroom scene in the shining you don't have to pace it that way right not only are they not only are they showing up in the same kind of way in horror movies but they're starting to sound the same is that a genre thing you think i don't know i feel like it's a producer thing i feel like the producers are like we need you know what this movie needs? Like Candyman only ever had one person looking in a mirror saying Candyman. We need like a dozen. <laughs> we need them in a row. We need them in a line. It feels like that. I don't know that it's that, but it feels like that. Gotcha. Right? Or, you know, we need Michael, you know, he always kills people with knives. We need a non-knife kill. So, like, the two cops sitting in the car scene, remember he pulls the guy out and steps on his face and crushes him with his foot or whatever. Right? I feel like... I don't know. I'm just saying, like, for Michael's some reason, boot goofing. <laughs> it feels like a, a force somehow, but I could be totally wrong. But anyway, the only thing I bumped on was it feels a little safe, right? Like the original Candyman was jagged AF, right? like, <laughs> way more flawed, way more problematic, all kinds of plot holes. When you think about it, um, it was massively transplanted. I mean, Clive Barker's story was set place set in Liverpool. <laughs> Right, came in, there, none of the race things. It was. It wasn't the same, right? So I wanted to mm-hmm. uh, hold, uh, I'll hold yeah, on to that. No, no, no. no you, you, you but that's the thing is, I ju- I just feel like the original Candyman, both both for the bad because I feel like it. it there there are bigger plot holes, bigger like you know, problematic things happening that shouldn't be happening, um, or conveyed the way they're conveyed. Uh, that happens in the movie, but it's also more. It felt more dangerous. Right, it felt like okay. bootleg. <laughs> felt more bootleg than this one does. This one feels really polished, and I think the polish is the only thing to me that was the detriment of it. Right, like I would, I would have loved for it to, to, to take a. Nah, I'm, I, however, I say it is going to be wrong because it's not. Because that's what I mean is I think that it planted seeds that are going to grow out. I think there's more radical. We got to let us. We got to let it right, grow right, a little. Exactly. It's, we, that's it, fair. So yeah, go ahead. The um, well, I just want to hit, hit on the things that I bought. Yeah. But then I want to ask you about where Candyman came from because I guess the guy in the laundromat's reading the book where Candyman makes mm-hmm. his first appearance. And I want to. Do you know anything? I mean, b- b- yes, but but also no because no, the lore. So they really cleaned up the lore in this movie. Right, like the 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 lore makes a lot more sense now than it did the way it was left from the first three. Right. Okay. So that part is makes sense, but the point of this movie and the irony of remember, nothing in the new Candyman is what it seems. It's it's literally like David Lynch. It's like a trick. It looks like a mainstream normal movie, but nothing in this movie is what it seems. That's why it starts upside down. That's what I was trying to tell you at the beginning. Nothing's what it seems. Right. So like, the it, all right. So if you take Candyman. Sorry, I'm not going to explain this right. Say, I'll figure it out. Okay. Well, the only thing is, there's two things that I pumped on. Yes. One was the art dealer when he was trying to run. He said, "Must go faster." I was like, "Okay, that's a little." That was terrible. Like it's that was terrible. That was kind of stupid. The kill was cool. The kill was cool, but like that was yeah. kind of like, oh man, no, come that, on. Yeah, like, that was. Yeah. Like, that I honestly I did bump on that. Now that you say it. That okay, but I was like, okay, that's a little dorky. But they they got killed in really cool ways. Right. Um. And then the only thing that I bumped on, but I just kind of excused it as, well, it's a horror movie, was the fact that his hand's rotting. And in the beginning of the movie, right. like, they're like a handsy couple. They're climbing all over each other, yeah. always hugging yeah. and kissing. Yeah. And then this dude's hand is like I didn't that at all. frostbit. And I told you in the theater, like, art people would do that. <laughs> well, no, but his wife would look at it. Like, if I came She's home. She's person. 
Dude, that hand was I'm decrepit. Telling you, man. There's no Akira Kurosawa lost toes she, filming a movie. The, they turned black. His, the wife or the, the the girlfriend of the wife, she didn't even want to hear a horror story. Like she's she grossed out by it. I mean, there's I, I'm you. I could see bumping out for sure. Their apartment's clean. That like one, yeah, I could see bumping. I mean, the paintings he's doing are awful, and the paintings the the art they went to go see was was horrifying. Yeah, but. Your hand don't look like that. <laughs> your hand. It was is... kind of portrait of Dorian Gray too. I was fine. I mean, I was fine with it. I, I you're, but I totally could see Bob it for sure. Um, but I will say this in terms of like how it looked, I thought it looked cool, and I liked when uh, it started like going up his uh, side yeah. of his neck. Did you notice it kind of like it looked like honeycombs? Yeah. yeah. I thought that was a really, yeah. really and that's, cool. There's touch. a fear of that look. So I, that's, that's I used that that used as like try of something because right. of the tea or something like that. But I remember people would take like the lotus like flower and like they were like photoshopping on like people's forearms and because it would be like a hole, but then there's like a seed in there. Yep. And I remember when I first saw that like it used to fucking wig me out, yeah. dude. Like, and they like, played with that a little. Like even too. even saying it now, like I'm getting kind of like you know my head's starting to itch a little bit because <laughs> I get a little uncomfortable. With it. Not as much as I used to. Right. But I did. I did think that the look of him with the the honeycombs right. at the end looked really, uh, really yeah. Cool. No, I think the look of it was great. And but the problem is the look of it was also a trick, right? Because they took an ugly neighborhood and make it beautiful. And you're telling me that it's a beautiful film. And they took an ugly film and now you have a beautiful film. Everything is everything's I'm, flipped. That's what I'm right. Everything's flipped. And that's is what I what I was trying to say was basically the crux of this movie if you had to first of all the smartest things i've heard about this movie came from the director herself so just go watch her interviews because she did amazing interviews about it she she, but but anyway the the flipped part is the irony is the the real um focal point of the movie is say my name right so but his name's anthony (laughs) and he's a he's a swarm so there's sherman there's all kinds of they gave us all kinds of names of the history you can't say his name the, the whole point of the movie is say his name, and you can't say his name. You would say Candyman, right. which isn't his name. It's not Anthony's name, right? So that's the thing is, wow. right, everything in this movie, nothing is... I need to watch it again with that mindset of <laughs> right. nothing is what it and is. And when, when he was painting stuff, he thought it was coming out great. It was coming out terrible. I mean, <laughs> it might have been great for like in terms of art quality, but like in terms of people walking in the room being like, oh my God, you're losing your mind. Right? <laughs> like, wow, you drew corpses. <laughs> right, exactly. I, I, that's the fascinating part to me is that nothing in this movie you can't quite get there. You can't quite get to the other shore. If you want to be a famous painter, the trade-off's too much. If you want to live in a nice place, the trade-off's too much. If you want to just live a simple, like I'm just a guy who sits in a laundromat and reads, it's not enough. Like you Mm -hmm. can't not, there's no path out of the traps of this film. Right. And the, the price always has to get paid. The pound of flesh always has to be delivered. So that is the amazing shit to me is this movie. But you you can't you won't see that until you sit with the movie, right? Right. Like, like because because it's all it's like being in a maze where every turn is wrong. Right? Damn. <laughs> there was a lot of um, really good lines in the movie too. There was. I really, I really thought the line they because we it was the one that we we were talking about when we walked to the car. They they love what we make, but they don't love us. Right. Right. Like that was like oh fuck, dude. Like, that that's, felt like meant. <laughs> yeah. Right. Totally. And it made, and it and it really like, it, it kind of just said like what I think like a lot of people like go through because like yeah. we I I've never like been discriminated like I've like right. I've got, I've been pulled over once and they let me go right. like I just as, he as, said of course he said would. do you know what happened I was like yeah I kind of like fudge that stuff so I was like well we're not gonna ruin your like I don't go like go right. through like hardships right. like that and right. I don't know like it, it, I thought that was just a really hard hitting line well there's a lot of stuff like that in there I'm curious what so I have a couple of questions for you because I'm curious first of all what you made of the art critic character did you like that arc did you well, when I first saw her, I was like, she's going to die. <laughs> she's going to die. Right, exactly. Um, did, did it feel like that could have just been cut all together to you? Did you no, like I liked I, I. Liked it. It's funny. We're sitting here talking about a movie, like giving like some criticism. I'm like, critics suck. <laughs> they just kind of do. They kind of do. You like, know? Yeah, well, she was terrible. She was, no, she was awful. And, she, and, and the fact that she like was shitting on the art and then all of a sudden two people die in there and all, oh now it's interesting right. like oh now now the you know the body count goes the more popular it gets yeah well it's right. kind of it kind of reminds you of like the news like i remember like i took a class 
it was like I, it was like right after I got kicked out of film school. I was like, maybe I'll do like journalism or something like that. Oh, no, communications. And then there was like a journalism class, mm-hmm. and like they talked about how his last name is Rollins too, no relation. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but he talked about how like you know a bridge collapsing with like six hundred people dying is going to be on the news as opposed to like you know a car crash with like three fatalities, sure. like that that kind of that sure. kind of stuff, and. You could see her like pulling off that kind of thing. Like the higher the body count, the more important it's going to be. Yeah. Or, you know, the more attention you can get, the more well, attention. She was a parasite. Yeah, right? she was. Right, and that's right. It, they, right, like just buzzing around, sucking the blood out of things, like <laughs> like an insect. Yeah, that's a great way. To... <laughs> right. <laughs> right, exactly. That's it. it was it again. It's that that's, that the movie was is doing stuff, but. Um, I'm also really curious of what you thought about the brother or family. Well, what do you think about the, the well, I mean, the art critic. critic thing, I feel like it has to be there for what I think the movie is trying to do with the whole like creator monster <laughs> art, like thing we've been talking about. I thought it was really well done in terms of he was falling apart. So in the scene where he's in her like antiseptic, perfect loft apartment, mm-hmm. art critic apartment with the coffee books all the art books on there i said like art criticism yeah terrible (laughs) um but uh sitting on top of karina green right but i the thing i really appreciated about it was he was falling apart on the outside but he was still desperately alive on the inside she had died inside a long time ago Mm. she was like a living corpse she was just walking around like coldly doing stuff you know it was she's a weird character and i and i liked that that kind of like dichotomy that he still had something in a candle inside of him was hadn't gone out right and she had been snuffed out so long ago she the, she was also one of the cooler kills in the film yes too and he got terrified on the way into that kill remember he's he saw remember he's oh Sherman yeah and all that stuff like Candyman himself is getting terrified of Candyman. That's a cool. I know. That's a cool thing. So uh, I think she had to be there for that to happen. Like so, I think a lot of that was whatever. But I yeah, I didn't bump on the character. What did you think of the family relationship and the and the brother and all that? I thought it was fine. I didn't you know it wasn't like a standout thing, but I thought it did what it needed to do. Because that it, I w- I think I bumped a little bit on the first of all. You just you said that someone on the internet described that as a comic relief character or something. The, right or like there's like a tweet talking about it like how they were like the sort of like relief yeah and i just kind re- of. I, yeah i didn't like any of that and i didn't think there was enough i didn't think there was enough of the dad we got to confront dad's belongings some of that just felt chucked in yeah they ran somehow. they ran and we were like we have to deal with all of dad's stuff and they like and that didn't feel like it ever paid off unless i missed it like i mean I it paid, it paid, maybe it paid off plot wise but it like it just didn't feel like it felt like why what did we what are we talking about and then it was gone. Like if you put a gun on my head right now and you're like what was the what was the dad <laughs> that was the plot point. of the movie like I've no, right. I have no idea. And and you know to to me the, the only other thing is that it's you know in in the the original Candyman the ending was so heart poundingly terrifying. <laughs> If if you came to it fresh, right? mm-hmm. you're probably not going to experience it like it now. But if when you watch it tonight, but like when, in, in the in its time, it was so terrifying. And I don't feel like I feel like this was more of the personal shopper horror, where it's going to be as scary maybe as the first one eventually. But it's got to do it in that creeping, yeah, settle in with you, invade your clothes with a scent, and then next thing you know, you're <laughs> anesthetized and. In a coma kind of way. Comparing it to Personal Shopper is pretty interesting because in terms of like how it scares you, because that's right. pretty equal. And my and if, you know, because they did the same thing for me. Like I was walking around the house probably by myself, right. and I thought about Personal Shopper and it was like Caleb or whatever the brother's name is. I yeah. thought about that and I was like, okay, <laughs> all right, let's put the <laughs> let's turn some lights on. <laughs> um, the other line yes. in the movie that I thought was really cool was when he shows his significant other, the painting. And he was like, what do you think of it? And she was like, it's kind of generic. She said like, you know, it's just okay. And he was like, no, no, no. How's it make you feel? Right. I was like, Ooh, that's a good line. As, right. as right. a, I think a lot of creative people can, <laughs> can, 
Again. Right, she was like doing the yeah the intellectual review of it, and he was like, "No, no, where does it hit you?" Yeah, because especially like now that I've been like recording like a lot more music, like I'll, like I'll record something that like I think sounds good, and then I listen to it, and I'm like, I feel nothing, and I'm like, did I just waste like a half hour like <laughs> like fucking with this track? And well, then you... probably not. It's probably other people are gonna feel it. I don't know the musicians feel it necessarily. Well, I fucking different. felt it, and then I <laughs> tried some again. I was like, oh, this, is very, <laughs> this is very good. I, I, but I thought, I thought like as a creative, like that's a line that like a lot of people like go through. Like you show right. someone something, you're because ex- there's a lot of times I've went to Alex excited to show right. her something, right. and then she looks at it and she doesn't like feel, totally. you know, you know, feel it, right. and you know, not not to say that like you know she was wrong. Like there's probably a lot of shit that I showed her. I was of like, course. yeah, it's probably missing a lot there's of heart. No right <laughs> yeah. Anyway, right? yeah, I I just I just thought it creatively. But that, that was... caught that. But that's what I'm saying is he gave a really empathetic performance for someone who's turning into a monster. Like you really got you when he was like sad, you felt sad, which a lot of horror actors don't pull off. Well, the, the and the other reason to bring that up is I saw um, one. It was like the the other line of dialogue that stuck with me, but I saw an interesting um, take on the Reddit film thing. Um, someone was talking about how a lot of people's criticism of the movie will be that they're really on the nose with like race relations right. and stuff like that. Right. It's and too preachy. Is, was the, that, yeah. Was, and that they, was Twitter's dumb concern. And what this guy was saying was basically like, yeah, we get that. That's how it looks. It right. looks like that they're being preachy, but how does that make you feel? Right. How does it make you feel when you think about that happening to a certain group of people? Like it's, yeah, it's going to look obvious. But like when you when you see that and your brain processes what's happening to these individuals, right? And every fucking person who said that would come to my they live watch party. So, <laughs> yeah, they so go. So, <laughs> they totally would. So go fuck yourself. <laughs> it, it, with the glasses. <laughs> with the glasses. <laughs> with the with the glasses that when they bought like yeah. a hot topic, yeah. you know, yeah. put feeding their money yeah, back exactly. into the. They, yeah, every single one. Not one person would turn down my they live party. But I thought I thought that was a really uh, strong way to look at it is is you know because i also one of also one of my favorite quotes is, i think it's duke ellington i think i'm wrong uh, uh, um uh, he's who said if it sounds good it is good i mean that probably sounds that sounds like a very jazzy <laughs> thing to right, say so, if it's not duke ellington it's cap galloway or yeah like, so what are, what are the what are those dudes said that and i that that has always struck yeah. a chord me and, and and that reminded me it, i felt like it was in the same vein of like how does it make you feel yeah and I just think that's a really interesting thing to think of. I do too. When you think of you know stuff in the arts, and I think it's telling that that it ca- that it caught you. But I think part of why it caught you is he has that tortured. There, there's a way to act a part like that. Like my one of my oftentimes my favorite part, depending on my mood, uh, Laura, uh, which I think is 1942. Um, Dana Andrews, terrific actor. Play. Now I got the Rocky Horror song stuck in my head. <laughs> oh, no. He plays... There's an actual theme song to Laura. Like, it's one of the most famous songs in all of movies. Like, so it, now it's stuck in my head. Oh, so. Jesus. But um, the... It's a pretty famous plot, actually, in terms of noirs, because it's so... It's so quietly twisted. Where, but this detective finds out about this person... This this woman, who, this really intriguing woman who dies, and she's, there's a painting on the wall of her, in her apartment of, her, of herself. And he... F- keeps investigating her and the more he finds out about from her friends talking about her and her family talking and her like whatever the more he falls in love with her but she's dead and he keeps going to her apartment looking for clues and this painting's on the wall and he keeps falling more in love, in love with her and then this guy walks in halfway through the movie and he's just there with like a, with a scotch in his hand just looking at the painting and he's like you fall in love with a ghost I mean, you know, <laughs> <laughs> but then she shows up because she's actually alive Spoiler, I guess, for 1942. <laughs> um, and then she realizes that he fell in love with her as a dead person, and it's really creepy and kind of twisted, right? So, I love. I there's a he he doesn't want to be falling in love with her, and he hates every step of the journey he's on, and his acting conveys that. And and this same thing happens in Candyman. That Anthony character, I've so felt for the things he was going through and his lines hit me different because, because of how well that was being portrayed. I, it actually makes me feel even more sad for him now that we're talking about it. Cause he, he goes to his significant other and like, how does it make you feel? And I'm thinking about when the art critic is looking at 
his work and he's blabbering to her because he's nervous. Yeah. And it makes me really sad because all he wants is for the critic to feel what he felt yeah. when coming up with this. And I think that's yeah. the hardest thing about art. And it's also one of the most beautiful things about it is if you can make people feel what you felt when creating this, right. you've done your job. Right. Or if you can make them feel something, you've done you've done your job. Right. But when people absolutely just shit on it, yeah. stomp on it and say they don't get it, that is a soul crushing fucking feeling. Right. And, and right, and this movie didn't compromise. He did awful things in his relationship and trying to get famous and he was not a perfect person, right? Yeah. So it wasn't like we were being presented like a every it wasn't Jimmy Stewart's character in its wonderful life. Like this person was flawed and had cracks and He's us, <laughs> right, right, <laughs> yeah. right? We're the we're we're in the hive. So, uh, I, yeah, I think I think the lines. But that's the thing is, you see what just happened to you. That I think that's what's best about this movie to me. Uh, of what I've caught so far is the fact that when you start thinking about it, it can come back to life in your head. It's yeah. like it's like Christine fixing herself and the headlights coming back up and like we're we were talking about it. You're like, oh yeah, there's this thing, and then remember he was this, and then all of a sudden, yeah, I connected you're like, in the movie again. I right? connected a, like a Reddit comment with right. with like two different scenes, right, right. <laughs> and it happened to you, but you were feeling it. You're like, I felt like, oh, I felt bad for this guy. You refelt it just now. I watched you do it, and that's that doesn't happen with most horror movies though, except for like I feel like how cool it was to watch this happen, or you know, like yeah, um, loved it. Wow, damn. <laughs> I'm I'm loving Glad the movie. I'm loving the movie even more. Just like talking, <laughs> talking through it. You. And there was and, and honestly, um, I'll say uh, with like more of the general consensus mm-hmm. from from what I've seen. Mm-hmm. Uh, like I saw someone in our group today, the Hollow Weekly group, join on Facebook. Where yeah, there's a lot of <laughs> we've, please do we've, join we've, join that swarm. We we've, we've curated a little bit more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've, I've got we're getting even better, dude. I've gotten a lot of messages from people who are like, oh, "Why is it all thing?" And I got to tell you guys. I ain't responding to none of y'all. <laughs> no, don't. <laughs> I don't give me. a shit. Complain to me. Complain to George. Go to George. I don't, to George. I don't give a shit. I look at your comment and go, that sucks. <laughs> and then I, I just don't know. Go. I never get messages. How weird. They always message me. Why dude? is that? It's so weird. I, I don't know. I haven't gotten one message from that group. That's one so one guy was like, I've brought friends. and fa- I've probably brought 20 people. Just send them to me. Oh, I was like, you come can, to me. Come like, to, if you're listening, come to me. But, or you can leave. I don't give a shit. Wait, wait, wait. But, like well, I don't care. But that's the thing is, you, you guys, you have. This is one of those things. I, the weird side stop. And I'm ten seconds on this, but just so you know, you have no idea what you're being shielded from. There's a the lot, a lot of Greta Garbo nuclear sludge <laughs> of posts that would be in that if it was a free for all is just remarkable. And that's not. There are amazing contributions like. I have there's, pre- there's a lot. There are a lot of. People I have pre-approved so many people because they say so many interesting things or things I never would have heard of or, you know, like takes I or just even like the fun like oh yeah that was a thing but but behind that behind that cream of the crop like is <laughs> is just you have no idea the tsunami of <laughs> bullshit that would be in that group self promotion and oh like a the million ho- like the, check the out the my horror new... book club the horror book oh club it God. is nothing of but right. authors right. being like hey i just wanted to post this thing here if if not but it is my book <laughs> like we're not perfect at it we're not we're we're not getting enough support on patreon to spend nearly enough time to curate it the way we want to so we're just doing the best we can but just so you know like we're trying to make it a better place for everyone by just setting up as pre-approval and I'll get better at it. But like we need to, in the meantime, you're in a better group than you would be if I, there were no control. We need to do a parody of that song from Moana. You're welcome. <laughs> where <laughs> right. we just list off all the bullshit like right. I posted oh, that we shielded from or that they don't have to like look at our deals. I, like, I, I cleared it all out the other day and I woke up and it was like 640 pending posts. Dude. Yeah. Like, oh. It's a lot. Um, like, what the? But one of the posts that went through yeah. was a review for the movie. And I think we have a good mix of people. I, we do have a good, like, a hardcore group of, we always talk about the 80s horror fans who say nothing. I mean, we talk ad nauseum about that. Um, Some of them are really fucking smart. And I appreciate their closed minded genius with their focused, obsessive point. I just don't like when they reject everything else out of hand. When I they s- talk about what they're experts on, I'm good but with But there it. was one review, and I, maybe I can pull it up while, yeah. I, while, I, while I talk, um, who pretty much felt slightly above middle of the road about the movie. And I was really surprised to see that. I thought a lot of people, uh Oh, 
R.C. Martin, happy birthday and Mr. Birthday. <laughs> great, <laughs> great, great, great compre- <laughs> contributor to the to the group. He, I mean, literally the best. Um, yeah, whenever, whenever, like, Martin, if you're listening, he, uh, he was watching something the other day, and he posted about it, and I was like, oh, I want to check that out. <laughs> he was my very first pre-approval of the, the whole group, except for, like, admins. Um, anyway, I'll... I'll, I'll I'll figure who who posted. Yeah, it, but, but it's, you're right. I th- you're that was that's heartening to see. But yeah, it was it was a good one. They were like, "Did I like the movie? I liked it I just. Think I, saw it I liked it. Ju- it was a big. It was a big long review. Yeah, and I it think was, he said, you know, not as good as the original, but yeah. it never was going to be. I read that one. Yeah, yeah, and I thought that was a really good. It was re- a sane take. <laughs> yes, it was. A, it was a sane right. take with the. I didn't agree with some of it, but it was a sane take. But I but I I, I like being able to see like that the, this movie. I, right, I, I but think can I tell you something just honestly from yeah. the heart? I would rather see that same take that I 80% disagree with as a post in that group than a thousand, like, oh, my God, you know, guys, did you see that, you know, they're, they're, they're Rob Zombie's doing the monsters? What a shit show. Like, you know, fucking, like, kill me. Like, I mean, there are there are there like a hundred posts written like that that we we had to blow screen out, and then there's this sane take about this, and I'd rather be I'd rather disagree with it, yeah, like and have it thought I, through. I read the whole review, <laughs> right. whoever you are, and I'll figure out who it is. I read your whole review, right, exactly. and, and I thought it, I thought it was I thought it was a great take that oh. that, uh, that you know the way you experienced the film, and I thought you you, you written you wrote it very nicely and it got like a hundred likes in the group yeah. like people were really resonating with it just so you know the secret to get pre-approval in this facebook group i'll just give you this here now yeah, here it is Here's just the come with the first post and have the first post say anything even remotely thoughtful good or bad that isn't a blanket statement and or a very grainy <laughs> image <laughs> <laughs> yeah, or like where they find those postage stamp-sized like, thumbnails and think that it's a real picture. <laughs> but you're, it's just anything. I mean, even if, like, you could say, the post could literally be, I 100% disagree with everything you guys just said on this podcast, and here's why. And you will automatically I would, get pre-approval. I'd read it. <laughs> You'll get pre-approval <laughs> over anything that is a post that comes at us, and it's like, Chucky's the best killer ever, and nobody else, everyone else sucks. You're never getting pre-approval. No, no. <laughs> so, sorry. Well, that was one of our missions when we first did it. Was like we would like tell people when they said a movie sucks, we would just be like, "Explain yourself." Yes, <laughs> totally open to the fact that it sucks, but yeah, but you got to put a little put a little polish on, it, put a little English on there. See, see if we can uh, agree with you somewhere. Well, but what's really cool is at the end of this is someone who really just hadn't seen a lot of Candyman, but just absorbed it, really liked the movie. Someone. Who loves Clive Barker and watched all the Candyman's isn't an obsessive by any means. Trust me, with Candyman, or, or nearly as knowledgeable as a lot of the horror fans I've seen about it. But read John Towson's book. By the way, can I recommend John Towson, who's done interviews on this podcast? We should have him back on the show. There's an that amazing series called Devil's Advocates. They do incredible work of of, of books about you know the movies we all love, and he wrote their their entry for Candyman and his. He had he had all kinds of takes and all kinds of background on it, like whatever. But his 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 one of his he does a great thing on censorship, which is his topic of extra expertise, right? And but he also does a lot of things about class and opportunity and just incredible like writing in there. But he does it on the the ninety two Candyman anyway. The as someone who loves the franchise for the great things that it's done, I also love the movie. So the fact that there's a consensus. And the fact that there's people in the group where normally people come out and be like, never as good as original, and they're like doing sane takes about it. This is all good signs for the world. <laughs> yeah. Candyman, you made the world a better place. And you were critically uh, reviewed well. So maybe you won't get slaughtered. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yes. At maybe, your, at maybe. your, at your you know, high, fancy high rise. <laughs> Um, well, that's that's pretty much it. That's what we. I mean, there's, I don't know what else to add yeah, to that review except for let us know what you think about the new one, the old one, the franchise, Clive Barker, Phil, Philip Glass, Halloween. Uh, <laughs> here's here's okay. I have a I have a plea. Also, we had a review that I don't think I got to acknowledge on oh. the show last time. And right. let me just check this real quick here. I okay. Blah, blah, blah. Getting to like the main page of reviews is kind of difficult. Oh yeah, it's an Apple thing, so we're gonna be here for five minutes. Let no, I'm here time. now. We had a July first uh, oh. uh, review, and and uh, we missed acknowledging that. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, 
Uh, I, apparently, we were talking about. <laughs> this is, I gotta pay attention to this more. Often. We were talking about uh, going ghost hunting, and one of the reviewers has went ghost hunting the coolest. Uh, okay, Terminator eighty six. Uh, I've been to, to a couple haunted locations. The coolest one I've been to is Savannah. Okay, anyway, you guys can go read it on. It's on there. That's a great That's a good one. My plea, though. Yeah. First of all, thank you, thank you for the review. I, by the way, before you do your plea, I want a review from an actual ghost. Now you got me hungry. So if you're a ghost. If you've passed away well, here, and you're listening, here's here's right now, here's. Please leave us. I can any I can do you one, one better. I can do you one better. Star. I can do you one better. I can I can I'm gonna yeah. make a I'm gonna make a I'm gonna make a plea sandwich combo. Let's do it. Mambo jumbo. Here, are you ready for Let's this? Let's do it. Okay, we are at 49 reviews. We are one away from 50. We're very not round numbers. Uh, we are <laughs> very close. Yes. To fifty. Yes. One of one, and Couldn't I, I see, I see the numbers. We got, we have yeah. listeners. Yes. All right. We, I want to hit fifty. We have listeners. We, we don't have episodes. That's, a, that's uh, been the problem. Well, we did take a little, we did, we did take a little high in during COVID. But we are back. We're back. We, yeah. Um, I'll make it simple. Yes. You don't have to write anything thoughtful. Okay. Just go there. Hit you got, five stars. You're me already. Go there. Hit five stars mm-hmm. on the Apple Podcast app. Uh comment Candyman five times in the uh, mirror i just want to see if, if you yeah. say it with your fingers is does it count no 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 just typing it out doesn't count but type it out and say it in the mirror and let us know because <laughs> then if you do die then you are a ghost you can follow up your review which hits your oh, thing yeah? oh and then you can say damn. you're you can you can see that's your you, your full yes. circle you are so yes fucking you can good. you can yeah. you can then give us another review that says guys i'm a ghost i Totally. hate it here and then we'll do some sort of totally. exorcism thing and then we'll bring you back and then uh right. we'll make a big thing and out maybe of as a ghost you've joined all your relatives they can all do reviews unless your relatives hate you yeah. and then we well, <laughs> right. it's true but all that works out on the other well side, they are so. making they are they are going to make the exorcist the rebooting the exorcist as like a trilogy they're putting like a fuck ton of money behind it okay and those movies always get haunted that's true. And so what we'll do is is we'll talk to the people, the production company making, it, and we'll like, hey, we know a guy right. who would love to fuck with your set. Yep. And so yeah, basically, this guy gave us a five star review, and he's dead. So we'll send. Him and he's away. dead. So yeah, while you guys go have lunch, he'll light shit on fire. Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. And you can, and we basically we're employing the dead. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Opportunity abounds. <laughs> it goes to the economy. <laughs> <laughs>